Approximately every 12 minutes, someone in the U.S. commits suicide. Over 44,000 people in the U.S. die from suicide each year. In 2016, 9.8 million American adults seriously thought about suicide. 2.8 million made a plan, and 1.3 million attempted suicide. It is the 10th leading cause of death in the U.S. However, it is the second leading cause of death for people 10 to 34 years of age. It's the fourth leading cause among people 35 to 54 years old. And it's the eighth leading cause among people aged 55 to 64. Suicide is a major worldwide public health problem. It's reported to be more prevalent in regions with advanced health care systems. Worldwide, nearly 1 million lives are lost each year to suicide. And between 3 to 5 percent of adults attempt suicide at least once in their lives. There is not a single risk factor that is sufficient to predict suicide. A previous suicide attempt is a major risk factor for a future suicide attempt. Resulting in a 30 to 40 time increased risk of death by suicide compared to those who did not make the first attempt. Affective disorders, substance misuse, anxiety disorders, certain personality disorders, and psychotic disorders are all established risk factors for suicide attempts. There are also some common factors that have held associations with suicide attempts. These include childhood trauma, genetic factors, hopelessness, irritability, pessimism, neuroticism, impulsivity, self-criticism, self-blame, no religious affiliation, and poor social support, just to name a few. The relationship between suicide and psychiatric disorders is an important issue. Mental disorders are among the strongest predictors for suicide attempts. This study states that borderline personality disorder, anorexia, depression, and bipolar disorder have the highest suicide risk. In fact, psychological autopsy studies suggest that more than 90% of people who die by suicide have a diagnosable mental disorder. So obviously, the cause of death by suicide is not a disease that can be treated by hydrogen. There are many, many factors involved in why someone would want to take their own life. Because of this, we're going to focus this video on mental illness and look into how hydrogen can potentially benefit certain mental illnesses. And in doing so, have the potential to decrease the risk of suicide. Before we get started with the specific mental illnesses, first, let's go over one common way hydrogen can potentially help. Our research found that oxidative stress and inflammation are common among many of these illnesses. So let's see how hydrogen can be a benefit in this way. Then when it's mentioned in other topics, we will already have laid the groundwork of how hydrogen can help. So why is talking about oxidative stress and inflammation so important when discussing this topic? Well, to quote this study, the brain with its high oxygen consumption and lipid rich environment is considered highly susceptible to oxidative stress and redox imbalance. Therefore, the fact that oxidative stress is implicated in several mental disorders, including depression, anxiety disorders, schizophrenia, and bipolar disorder is not surprising. Oxidative stress results from a breakdown in homeostasis between ROS and antioxidants. Emerging evidence here suggests that neuroinflammation and oxidative stress may be a major contributor to major depressive disorder. In fact, patients with this disorder show an increased expression in inflammatory and oxidative stress biomarkers. Neuroinflammation is also related to fatigue, mood, anxiety, and sleep. Here it says that oxidative stress has been associated with several diseases which are specific for nervous system impairment, including neurodegenerative diseases and neuropsychiatric diseases such as schizophrenia and major depressive disorder. Chronic oxidative stress and inflammation causes deteriorations in central nervous system function. This study says hydrogen water may be effective in controlling negative emotions by reducing oxidative stress and inflammation in the central nervous system. It goes on to say that daily administration of hydrogen water for four weeks may attenuate and prevent the cumulative oxidative stress in the brain. Let's check out a few more powerful quotes concerning this subject. Continuous consumption of hydrogen water reduced oxidative stress in the brain and prevented the stress-induced decline in learning and memory caused by chronic physical restraint in mice, highlighting the potential application of hydrogen in cognitive impairment and stress-related disorders. And here's another one. Our results demonstrate that hydrogen-rich water attenuates stress-induced oxidative stress and neuroinflammation, in turn preventing the development and progression of depressive-like behavior following chronic stress exposure. And another one. 
Hydrogen-rich water has antidepressive-like effects by inhibiting oxidative stress, inflammation, and apoptosis in the hippocampus and prefrontal cortex. And one more just to drive it home. Increasing evidence suggests that oxidative stress and inflammation in neurons are involved in the pathological manifestation of many neurological and neuropsychiatric disorders. And hydrogen water administration may thus help alleviate the symptoms of these disorders. The first mental illness we will dive into is depression. Clinical depression has been associated with suicidal thoughts, attempts, and deaths. More than 70 to 80% of suicides occur in the context of a depressive disorder. More than two-thirds of the suicide completers and suicide attempters have mostly untreated major depressive episodes at the time of the suicidal act. Major depressive disorder is a prevalent disorder that affects about 350 million people around the world. Classic antidepressants are effective in less than 50% of patients. They are often associated with a wide range of undesirable side effects. Because of this, preventative and therapeutic measures with fewer side effects may have a promising future. Depression is increasingly considered to be a whole body illness. It involves the dysregulation of multiple systems, including the nervous system, the endocrine system, and the immune system. Here we see hydrogen succeeded in suppressing depressive-like behaviors. Here it indicated an antidepressant-like effect of H2 on radiation-induced depression. And here it shows higher depression levels can be mitigated significantly with treatments of H2. To quote this study, hydrogen-rich water significantly attenuated the depressive-like behavior exhibited by the stress group mice, suggesting that the hydrogen-rich water may prevent the development and progression of depressive-like behavior. The study concluded that hydrogen-rich water may be used as a novel, effective, and preventative intervention for depression. Another angle to look at when discussing depression is the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Over the past 30 years, numerous investigators have noted abnormalities in the HPA axis in people with depression. Evidence with the HPA activation is associated with increased risk of depression relapse and even suicide. Here it says that repeated inhalation of hydrogen gas inhibited hyperactivity of HPA axis. Another study says that the HPA axis dysregulation may play a role in suicidal risk. This study even suggests the possibility that the dysregulation of the HPA axis may be a determinant of violent suicidal behavior in depression. However, it says here that the neuroprotective effects of hydrogen is associated with the regulation of the HPA axis homeostasis. And it also says here that hydrogen was associated with the normalization of the stress-induced HPA axis dysfunction. The next mental illness we will discuss is anxiety. Anxiety is a normal emotional response to a threat or potential threat. When this emotion is inappropriate, extreme, or persistent, it's classified as pathological. Anxiety is implicated in a number of psychiatric disorders, such as depression, panic attacks, phobias, generalized anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Anxiety disorders affect approximately 28.8% of the U.S. population. It imposes an individual and social burden that amounts to a total cost of $42 billion U.S. dollars in 1990 alone. Anxiety disorders are the most common class of psychiatric disorders in the U.S. and in many other countries. It is estimated that one-eighth of the world's total population suffers from inappropriate anxiety. Here it's suggested that anxiety disorders are associated with suicidal attempts. Among individuals reporting a lifetime history of suicidal attempts, over 70% of them had an anxiety disorder. The fact that anxiety disorders are highly undertreated and underdiagnosed reflects that properly screening for and treating anxiety disorders should be encouraged. The involvement of oxidative stress and anxiety-like behavior have been widely demonstrated. This suggests that a therapy specifically targeting at reducing ROS production will possibly have a beneficial effect in overcoming the oxidative stress and anxiety. And here is where that part I talked about oxidative stress comes in handy. The findings in this study suggest that four weeks of hydrogen water administration improve mood and anxiety. These results suggest that hydrogen water may reinforce quality of life through effects that increase central nervous system function. 
involving mood, anxiety, and autonomic nerve function. Here we see hydrogen administration attenuated anxiety-like behaviors. Here it shows the anti-anxiety effect of H2 as well. To quote this study, these results indicate that hydrogen water may decrease anxiety-related behaviors and prevent heightened oxidative stress. Next, we'll talk about the mental illness of bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder is a relatively common neuropsychiatric disorder with an estimated prevalence of 1-2% to and a high burden of disease. It is characterized by intermittent episodes of mania or hypomania usually interlaced with depressive episodes. It is also a serious mood disorder clinically presented as unusual shifts in mood, energy, and cognitive level, with or without depressive episodes. Symptoms are different from the normal ups and downs, and may even damage relationships, job or school performance, and even cause suicide. It is estimated that individuals with bipolar disorder are 30 times more likely to attempt suicide than those with no psychiatric disorder. Bipolar disorder is associated with increased oxidative and inflammatory stress. Increased oxidative stress parameters and activated antioxidant defenses may be associated with the psychiatric phase on the disease. Also, it says here that levels of key redox enzymes, including superoxide dismutase and catalase, have been reported to be lower in patients with bipolar disorder than in matched controls, which the upregulation of these two enzymes by hydrogen have been implicated in many studies as well. Mitochondrial dysfunction appears to be involved in the development of bipolar disorder. It has been suggested that novel therapeutic agents for treating this disorder should target mitochondrial function. Here it is indicated that hydrogen decreased mitochondrial dysfunction and inflammation in patients with mitochondrial myopathies. To quote this study, preliminary clinical trials also show that drinking hydrogen water seems to improve the pathology of mitochondrial disorders. Schizophrenia is the next mental illness to discuss. Schizophrenia is a complex and debilitating psychiatric illness. This study suggests that schizophrenia increases the risk of completed suicide by 10 times. The role of oxidative stress in the neurobiology of schizophrenia is a promising target in order to provide new therapeutic interventions. Several studies have demonstrated symptom severity with antioxidant status and have linked defects in the antioxidant defense system with schizophrenia. A previous study revealed that oxidative stress of the brain causes cognitive and motivational deficits in schizophrenia. This disorder is part of a multi-system inflammatory process, and anti-inflammatory therapy is suggested for treating schizophrenia. Mitochondrial dysfunction is frequently reported in schizophrenia as well. Here we see that hydrogen water improves mitochondrial dysfunction and inflammatory processes. And again, here it concluded that hydrogen attenuated mitochondrial oxidative stress and dysfunction. Next, we're going to look at a problem that you may not consider a mental illness. And maybe it's not technically classified as one, but it plays a huge role. The problem is stress. We all have it and none of us want it. Stress can be very problematic and cause a string of other issues. Chronic stress and anxiety are well known to have a negative impact on mental health. It is also a well-known contributor to mood, mental disorder, and suicide risk. Stress is defined as physical, chemical, or emotional factors that cause bodily harm and often cause disease. Chronic stress accelerates aging, impairs the immune system, suppresses fertility, contributes to digestive problems and loss of appetite, and increases anxiety and depression symptoms that may increase the risk of suicidal thinking. Chronic stress can lead to even more serious health problems, such as hypertension, heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, and obesity. In healthy individuals, aging, job stress, and cognitive load over several hours can induce increase in oxidative stress suggesting that preventing the accumulation of oxidative stress caused by daily stress and daily work contributes to maintaining quality of life and ameliorating the effects of aging. Stress-related disorders are the most common debilitating psychiatric diseases around the world. It is one of the most important factors responsible for depression. Stress also plays a major role in the various processes associated with mood and suicidal behavior. The individual's coping style to psychosocial stress impacts the stress-induced pathological changes and the risk of psychological disorders such as depression. Here, hydrogen treatment prevented chronic, unpredictable, mild stress-induced depressive-like behavior. This study found that repeated inhalation of hydrogen gas enhanced resilience when subjected to acute or chronic stress. 
by blocking the normal stress-induced depressive and anxiety-like behaviors. The behavior results indicated that hydrogen gas enhanced the resilience to acute stress without any side effects. It even shows that hydrogen treatments in adolescents increase the resilience to stress in early adulthood. This illustrates the long-lasting effect of hydrogen gas on stress resilience. Another quote from the study says, this strongly suggests that hydrogen as a potential preventative and or therapeutic molecule has beneficial effects on resilience to stress and even to stress-related disorders, including depression and anxiety. Well, I know this has been our heaviest topic yet. Based on what I presented, do you think hydrogen can be beneficial for the future of this issue? If so, the amount of good hydrogen can do is at least worth a try, don't you think? Well, that's it. This concludes our series of H2 versus the top 10 causes of death in the US. How did you like it? What did you learn? This has been our most challenging and research dense series yet. Countless hours have been invested to pull it all together with the hope in mind to help a lot of people with the information. But we have so much more where that came from. Please consider becoming a patron at our Patreon account to help us spread this message. As always, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And that's your dose of H2 for the top 10 causes of death in the U.S.